So I'm going to start here by dropping in a cube. I'm just going to add a fillet so it looks nice. If you have any geometry you have in mind that you'd want to do this kind of animation with, feel free. And I'm going to turn off my world axis and my work plane. And then you can just drop in a camera and uh, zero out everything. And just back it up here. And all we're going to do at first, we're going to make sure we're on three seconds here. I'm going to do control D and change my FPS to 24 frames per second. And all we're going to do is rotate the cube. And the kind of principle of this sort of animation where you're using the velocity of an object is that each shot kind of contributes to the next shot um, and the beginning and the end carry the kind of same speed and velocity which gives a nice smoothness between each shot and it's something you can utilize quite well and it's very simple to set up so we're going to do that um, so if you hit a keyframe on the first frame uh, come to the end of your clip and you can maybe rotate this 180 down on the y 180 on the x and hit your keyframe now you if you if you're using a different kind of geometry and you just want something to look cool feel free to just kind of spin it like this um and, and do whatever you want um i'm just doing this right now because for the cube i want to look at the front on the on the first frame and then just kind of look at a face on on the end frame too so it's just kind of something that's good to be able to practice with but in any case, if, if you do have any geometry, feel free to just spin it in whatever way you like. The result will not change. Um, and then if you come to your H um, rotation, and all we're going to do here is kind of flip these two splines like this. And if they weren't selected, you can just drag over them or do Control-A. I'm just going to flip them like this. Now, we don't want this line going straight up because that's going to be a bit too blunt in the way it moves. So we're just going to kind of bring it in and this kind of flow in the middle here is telling us that it's going to go quick and slow down and then speed up again. And then you get that same motion in each shot and you get something that looks very nice. So if we play that back now, the cube's going to do a bit of a spin and then speed up again. But we need to make sure that that happens on each axis. So I'm going to do the same on this axis. And then you play it back. And now you kind of have a unified spin. That looks very cool. Now it can be a bit choppy in the beginning frames where you just kind of dart away from your beginning position. But that just kind of takes a bit of tweaking to get rid of. It's not that much, um, much of an issue. I think it's personal preference really. Now we're going to do the rest of the animation with the camera. I think you have more flexibility if you keep the geometry, find a nice balance between what your camera is doing and what your um, subject or geometry is doing um, because in the final result you're not really going to be able to tell the difference but it's just what makes it easier to work with. So pressing F2 then or middle mouse clicking and coming in to your top view. I'm going to drag my camera quite close to the cube and you can do any sort of movement with this but just for example purposes I'll show you this. I just kind of want the cube up close but not of course this represents the boundaries of our field of view I don't want it to hit the boundaries here um, but before I do that I'm going to change to um, 80 millimeter just because I don't like 36 really uh, and then do the same thing and if you come back to your f1 view we're looking them both you can kind of move these while looking at both and I'm just going to hit keyframe and then come to frame 72 and I'm going to move back all the way to where I want it to be on the last frame. And then I'm going to go to window, get your F curve. And of course, we're just working on the position Z right now. So you can grab those keyframes and do that nice little inversion. And then what you can do is simply watch your animation play out. Now, one thing I kind of want there is I want it to stop a little bit closer to the cube and then to move a little bit further away at the end which is where it takes a little bit of playing with as I want that slow down closer to the beginning and then more movement at the end like that 
So you can customize this to focus where you want and slow down where you want, whether you want to slow down towards the end or towards the beginning. As long as this is curving down in the end and this has got a steep hill. So if this is curving down in the beginning and this has got a steep hill at the end, you're going to get this kind of flow. And you can do this with any kind of camera movement or any kind of geometry, as long as they're speaking to each other in the same way. When you begin to add up the shots, you end up with a nice fluid animation. I will have a couple on screen that I've used in client projects, and it looks very nice. And if you were to group these together, call it shot one, just turn it off and come out the camera. And let's drop in a cube, put a filler on it, because it always looks nicer. <laughs> Um, and what else would we drop in? Let's drop in a torus and let's drop in a cylinder. Let me change that. And then, if you ungroup these, and we grab a cloner, drag them all into the cloner, make sure it's on grid array, put a bit of height there, put some room between them. So now we have three different pieces of geometry. Looks cool. And if you turn the clones from iterate to random, they're just kind of going to distribute randomly there. On the cylinder, I'm going to add a fillet too, because it always looks nicer. And I will pipe up the segments and do the same on the torus. Well, I'm going to make the pipe radius a bit smaller and uh, different segments. Okay, so what we can do now is drop in a camera. 80 millimeters, I'll do that ahead of time this time. Zero out everything. And zoom out. Got a bit of geometry to work through there. Might be easier to just F2 and drag it back. <laughs> um, now what we're going to do is go to MoGraph, holding Alt, drop in a random. And I'm just going to kind of screw everything up um, without thinking about it. Uh, I am going to mess with the scale, but that's not going to become animated. Uh, and then I'll maybe change things a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of push this away and have everything spin. So in the first frame, we're just going to keyframe all three of these. Go to uh, three seconds in at the end. And we're just going to kind of spin everything. Keyframe them all. I'm just going to kind of maybe allocate a little bit more space here. And come with my camera and just push everything away a little bit more and then come back and move the position ever so slowly. I just feel like I can see it a little bit, a little bit better out here. Um, come back in that camera. Okay, so now you've got everything just moving randomly. <laughs> that looks cool. But same thing again. I'm going to go three different F curves to handle this time. Invert one, grab the second one, invert two, grab the third one, and invert three. And now you've got a nice movement. I'm gonna mess with that seed. <laughs> Looks a bit too much like a Sonic advert. Okay, so. Now what we're going to do is come back and do the same thing with the camera. You guessed it. You might be able to do it off the back of your hand by now. We're going to zoom in all the way to this kind of front geometry. Keyframe. Little mouse click. Zoom out. Super far. Go to your window. Grab that position on the Z 
and just invert them. And now you're going to have the same kind of fluid movement where it looks awesome. But there's one more thing we want to do here. We want to create way more clones. Zoom them out. If you were to make this a square frame, do Shift V, and on your safe frames, just turn on that opacity. Now you're going to have a very interesting movement with this just kind of field of clones. And of course, it's um, completely procedural at this point if you wanted less or more. You can have either or. Maybe not so many, but just more spread out and then randomize the position of them a little bit more. I think the issue there is you could get some clipping between them. But either way, I mean, that looks much cooler. And now if you were to have both these shots play back to back, you can see how they would work in conjunction with each other. So that's all I'm going to discuss regarding this sort of velocity animation. I think I've laid it down enough. If you play with this in different patterns, different methods, different ways, no matter what, you speed in, slow down in the middle, you speed up at the end. And I think that is a massive step forward in your animation game if you are a beginner. This is extreme basics when it comes to animating. You just kind of want to get the, the hang of grabbing those F curves and moving them and understanding what the line translates to in motion. Once you learn that, you will be on your way to making some pretty cool animations. So thanks for watching this tutorial. Check out my other tutorials, check out my podcast and my store, and I'll see you in the next one.